Welcome back to the Mining Experience series. The Mining Experience is a live podcast that invites professionals from the mining industry to discuss new technologies, address challenges, and share work experiences. My name is Paulina Gallego, and I'll be your host today. I'm a mining and metallurgical engineer from the National University of Colombia, and I've been with Promen for almost one year now as a technical support specialist. Here is also our co-host, Daniela. Daniela, how are you today? Hi, Paulina. How are you? And thank you for the introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Daniela Jaimes, and I've been the marketing coordinator here at ProMine for the, last pa the past 10 months, and I'm very excited to be here with you. In this episode, we will discuss effective mining workflows. Our guests will discuss with us different methodologies on how to perform organization to uh, perform organization to stay efficient and consistent uh, in a project, whether it's for mining or any other type of process. Um, doing so, we can ensure that uh, our whole team is up, uh, up to date on all the aspects of certain processes, allowing better coordination. Thank you, Daniela. So I would like to remind everyone that if you're going to ask any question, you can use the Q&I button here on Zoom or the comment sections uh, on Facebook. So, well, today we have the pleasure to have a special guest. He is Mr. Pedro Gamboa. Uh, he is a geologist and mining enthusiast. Currently, he works as a project manager for the consulting department at ProMine. Leader of a group of geologists, him and his team provide support to mining sites in the geology, in the digital acquisition of databases, records, and plans. With a background of more than 14 years teaching CAD systems, GIS, basic programming, database manipulation, as well as interaction with operating systems and office automation, he previously obtained the position of associated professor and the department chair of civil engineering at the Universidad de Oriente in Venezuela. Hello, Mr. Pedro. How are you today? Hello, Paulina. Hi, Pedro. Uh, Hello, Daniela. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for your invitation. Uh, I would like to say this is my first live podcast, so uh, I think we're, I'm going to enjoy it a lot. We are so glad you are here with us. So, well, Mr. Pedro, uh, before, well, to start, we would like to ask you, what do you think is the most important matter to take into account when talking about planning a project? Okay. Uh, if we see it from the point of view of the company, of the, of the owners, the investors, uh, it's always going to be cost efficiency, always uh, crunching the numbers. Uh, from the point of view of, of the planner, from our point of view, the most important thing is uh, a good theoretical and practical knowledge of that that you are planning. Uh, also a good communication with the other persons in charge of other specific areas. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Uh, now we would like to know which tools do you think are essential for an effort, effective mining workflow? Uh, okay, uh, there are a lot of tools uh, per se in the industry, but I always try to look at it from a knowledge point of view, uh, having good experience in management or uh, planning, uh, good integration with uh, the multidisciplinary teams. Uh, this applies to any planning process, not, not specifically to mining. Uh, in terms of mining processes, I think that one of the most important topics that a planner should consider is a good inventory of all his resources, all types of resources, uh, explosive, machinery, personal, money. Of course. Perfect. Thank so you. once a plan is done, what do you think are the most important things to like review in time? Or what are the main factors that should be reviewed in time in that in that moment? Okay, uh, well, no plan is perfect, no matter how well you design it, no matter how much variables you take into account, uh, there's always going to be something in the way that uh, disrupts the, the process of, of what you intended in the original planning. Uh, you have to take in account uh, multiple variables. Uh, some are, are very inherent to the mind, some are external. 
uh, either the, the plan is always under continuous uh, adjustment. Uh, so uh, basically you always have to be uh, just aware of anything that is out of your plan uh, by diversity it may be because it's the only way that you can try to correct it in time and keep the, the cost low. Of course, one of the most important factors when making a planning in mind. Yeah, definitely. And well, talking about, you just said that no plan is perfect and that uh, if we have a plan, it has to be like in continuous, um, well, uh, adjustment. Then what, would, what do you think are the benefits of planning? Okay, uh, mainly to maintain the investment costs. That's the primordial in every mining company and most of, 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 of the companies because uh, it's an investment that the owners make, that the group of, of, of owners make. So they always want to maintain their, their costs uh, well reviewed. Uh, they only have to adjust the development plans uh, without generating unnecessarily stress over the work team and over uh, the machinery because at the end uh, this also uh, would disrupt the the primary um, cost of the project without any doubt and when you are like talking about the, the points that should be like taking into account what are the strategic points to take into account specifically when you are building a, a plan that works for mining in the mining industry. I mean, okay. Uh, in the mining plan planification, the fundamental objectives is to extract all the mineral at the lowest cost. Uh, but at the same time, uh, many contingencies must be taken into account when doing that planning. For example, uh, both uh, inherent to the mining process, uh, for example, the resources the replacement of those resources, the machinery, the time the machinery is in maintenance, the maintenance the time of, of, of the equipment, uh, possible labor accidents. We also have to consider some external facts to the mine, like political and uh, environmental loss, not only in the country where the mine is developing, developing but also uh, at the global state. Any 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 change in, in our global situation could disrupt directly our planification. Uh, met meteorological effects, pandemics, that, like is the case, uh, earthquakes, uh, falls in the price of the markets for the, for the minerals or the metals that we are mining, uh, all should be considered. The challenge uh, of a good planner is to allocate enough resources, money, time, into uh, those specific areas without uh, making the plan uh, catastrophic time that because uh, the owner or the investors uh, won't agree to that type of, of planning. Yes, definitely. And also I think we can mention in this part the importance of the sustainability development goals that are like super important part. And we can like the 17, they are more or less, yeah, 17 uh, development goals. They are not just applied in one stage of the planification. They are like all the time being included in different stages. So we need to also adapt these different uh, strategies when making a, um, well, a mining plan, I mean. Yes, yes, uh, surely. Uh, there, are very, uh, there, there are diverse theories but uh, all of them include uh, always reviewing and adjusting and readjusting. I haven't seen yeah. any kind of, of planning in uh, any area that doesn't have an, an adaptive uh, planification. Yeah. Well, and just because uh, you were saying, well, you mentioned a lot of uh, factors that might, might affect like internal and external factors that might affect. And just how you were saying, it is important that a plan um, knows when to change and when to adapt. What, what's the importance of flexibility when planning a project? I mean, you already mentioned some of the factors that make us need this flexibility, but can you elaborate on that, please? Yes, uh, sure. Thank you. 
Uh, okay. Uh, we can guarantee that a plan will be followed perfectly. That's that's simply impossible. Uh, if that would be, there would be no need for flexibility. If everything was perfect, always in time, always in cost, we, need, we wouldn't need flexibility. But uh, that's not possible. We just can't do that. The flexibility in a plan will allow uh, to retake the curse of our final objective and achieve our goal. Uh, if we don't consider, if we don't consider flexibility, we will just run out of resources. That's right. inevitable. Yes. And also, uh, now that you were talking uh, about adversity and contingencies, I think it's also important to mention how can you actually do or, or face these adversities or contingencies? Because not all the time can be, be, be planned. OK, uh, in, in theory, every time that you make a, a, a plan, any kind of plan, is, you always have to consider those adversities and uh, inside your, your planning schedule. Uh, but you can consider all of them or you can put them all in the plan because it's simply not profitable. You won't be able to make a low cost planning if you consider every type of adversity that comes into your head. Into your head. Uh, in those cases uh, in which this, the adversity presents itself, and it will occur. Uh, normally, the teamwork that you can uh, do with your collaborators, so your, your, your multidisciplinary team, will surely uh, bring the, the project back to, back to life. Okay, perfect. Um, so we'll talking, continue with uh, all these um, adversities and all these um, challenges that we have when we make a plan for this industry. Um, how do you, when you decide to start planning, how do you um, do it knowing that there's a volatile environment out there? How do you assess all the possible alternatives, all the possible contingencies that one might have? Okay, uh, well, that, that, that's very difficult. It's very difficult to assess everything. Normally, always in, in past experience, you know, people tend to, to take into account what they know is more probable to happen. Uh, nevertheless, uh, a planner could always take like a pessimistic, uh, a pessimistic, pessimistic view of, of the planning method. That is in order to try to contain the volatility. The problem is that when you present a, a group of owners or investors with a very pessimistic plan, the costs tend to go up very high in that plan. So in that case, the planner would have to be very, let's say, smart in selling what he thinks is the, the strategic places where he can invest time or all those pessimistic, in, in, in all that pessimistic scenario. Yes, definitely. Okay. And well, also you mentioned that uh, when you are like in this, um, facing the adversity or contingencies, your team is going to give you or bring you up in, in this, well, when you are in that stage, in that difficult stage, but also think leadership can be an important part in this mind planning um, Workflow. So, what kind of leadership adapts better to a mind planning under your perspective? Okay. Uh, well, each leader or or boss, if we if we talk about a, a different kind of, of, of theory, uh, everyone has a specific work methodology, normally based on his personality, things that he has been grown up with it, since a child or acquired in in his normal life. Uh, and experience also that he has acquired in previous jobs. Uh, I don't think that there's a specific type of typology or, 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 or definition of a, of a perfect leader in terms of planning. Uh, I don't think that it could be defined because in planning, you have to be very adaptive. Uh, in my case, personally, I try to defend more the type of leadership where 
uh, I work in collaboration with 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 the personnel that I am uh, that I that that I have to 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 leader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's uh, something for 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 my personal case. It works for me. Uh, other types of leaderships would could work very well in planning. It all depends on how that leader really reacts to to contingencies more than 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 a type specific of of, of type of leader. So yeah, do you think? Cool. Yes. So yeah. do you think? In this case, it is important to have like a team that it's completely when personalities, I mean, are similar or there is any space for diversity in this case. No, there, there should always be diversity. Uh, there should always be because uh, that's the best way for ideas to flow. If there isn't diversity, they're Definitely. basically they're going to only be following what the leader is, is, is telling them. And, probably when yeah. he needs them, their support, they won't be able to respond because they're already used to just follow the orders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point uh, you made there. Um, talking about, well, being prepared for uh, creating an effective uh, workflow, do you consider that there should be a specific uh, training or something that leaders can do for creating effective workflows? Okay, well, I, I have an academic background, so I'm, go, I'm always gonna defend the, the academics. Uh, let's say uh, any kind of degree in, in management, specific courses in, in planning, but uh, the real experience that the person has in planning doesn't need any kind of study. He just needs that he has the, the effort to learn. And uh, he only needs like a, a basic skill in, in, in his plan in life. And he can uh, basically uh, take that to his, to his uh, planning in, in the mining site. But uh, uh, I don't think that, that you need any specific preparation. It's good to have it. It's always gonna be good. And if you don't have it, there we come again with the teamwork. Uh, you should be, pre be, be aware that you need in your team persons that have those capabilities that you don't have. So you can always uh, go to them just for, for any kind of, of advice. Yeah, I mean, uh, there it's an, a perfect example of how important it is to have a diverse team. So if the leader or any other team member is missing a skill, uh, the other one should, should be complementing it, right? Definitely. Of course. So, sorry. So, well, thank you so much, Mr. Pedro, for your insights. And as we are approach to the end of this podcast, we just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them in the Q&I button in Zoom or in the comment section on Facebook. So, um, Mr. Pedro, we also would like to ask you, you know, as last but not least, what do you think is the importance in your experience that, uh, of the use of a software in the effective mining workflow? Okay, uh, well, a mining workflow, any workflow, is nothing but an algorithm taken to, to a, a diagram. It, it's basically an algorithm. Uh, it considers multiple variables, multiple possible results, what to do in each case scenario from a variable to a possible resource. Uh, and basically that's the same concept of any kind of software program, trying to uh, make the algorithm the most efficient or perfect as possible. Uh, we at ProMine, we share that ideology. Uh, we always go hand to hand with our mining, our, our mining partners, uh, or we trying to perfect the algorithm for them or for specific uh, needs that our clients always are, are needing and asking for. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, well, let me check here in the comment sections to see if we have a question in the chat also. Um, there is one, uh, do you think there is, it should be a difference between the plan in open peep or underground mining? Like when you are like planning these um, mining workflows or yeah, keep the same fundamentals? 
the fundamental is the same for every type of planning. That, that, that mostly doesn't differ because uh, when you plan, you always have to consider uh, uh, an arriving point and the, the, uh, and the obstacles that you can encounter in the way. The specifics now for being underground, being uh, open pit, depends uh, more on the resources that are used, the kind of technology and equipment that is implemented, but not in the, in the planning schedule as, as, as a soul, per se. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. Uh, well, I think that, well, with this, we can conclude our podcast for today. Uh, we want to thank everyone for attending and whoever will watch this later. Um, thank you, Pedro, for sharing your experiences and your thoughts, um, well, with all of us. And we really appreciate you being here. If anyone wants to watch this episode, uh, we have in our Facebook section uh, live, you'll find it there. Um, thank you for being here and listening to us. Oh, Daniela, I'm sorry for interrupt you. Before, just before I uh, finish this session and Mr. Pedro, there is just one last question here. Oh, sorry. It Go says on, from Antoine, it says, what is the difference between scheduling and planning? Uh, okay, the main difference is uh, that the approach in which it is made, uh, in scheduling, you are more strict. You don't consider uh, many of the, of the variables that could occur during the, during the process. In planning, you have to take that into account. Okay, thank you so much. So yeah. With that one, it's the last question. So thank you again. And thank you, Daniela thank you so and much. Mr. Pedro for your, uh, well, for sharing your knowledge with us. No, thank you very much for your invitation. And uh, I'm eager to come again in, in any time with another topic. <laughs> no, of course. That sounds thank great. You so much. Thank you everyone for attending and uh, we'll see you next month. Of course. Bye. Take everyone. care for now. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.